Here's what's happening now. Flakes are flying for the drive home. Find out if this cold weather is going to stay here for good. Paula. Hey, Ben, we are rounding down our get fit for good challenge, but not without introducing you to one of our superstars, Karen. All right, Paula, also ahead, don't let tax season stress you out. Help Me Hank has a team of experts ready to answer your questions that you might have. Our phone lines are open right now. And encouraging news about the water trouble in downtown Detroit, but the boil order is still in effect. A live update, first at four. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. We've got some breaking news. We are waiting to hear Attorney General Jeff Sessions. Right now, he is facing calls for his resignation after questions about his dealings with a Russian diplomat during the presidential race. Jason Colthorpe is following the very latest on this story and joins us now from the newsroom. Jason. Karen Sessions is scheduled to have a news conference at any moment, and we will take you there and listen in as it happens. But as we wait for that, let's catch you up on everything that has happened with this story. This morning, Sessions denied speaking to any Russians about the presidential race, but that's not really holding any water with some of the top Democrats who say that Sessions, at the very least, lied under oath during the confirmation process. Now, during those hearings, Sessions told Senator Al Franken, quote, I did not have any communications with Russians. Now the attorney general's staff confirms he did meet with the Russian ambassador twice in 2016. Sessions maintains he met with the ambassador in his role as a U.S. senator. Democrats Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer say he should resign. A larger group of Democrats and Republicans are saying that he should at the very least recuse himself from any investigation of Russia's influence on the presidential election. Now, Sessions did talk to some media this morning. He told NBC this this morning. Well, I have not met with any Russians at any time to discuss any political campaign. Well, I've said that uh, whenever it's appropriate, I will recuse myself. There's no doubt about that. This is an extremely serious matter. This is the other major foreign power interfering with, uh, with the democratic election of the United States of America. Nothing could be more serious. Now, again, those comments from this morning when the attorney general does start speaking, we'll take you to Washington, D.C. for that. But at this moment, doesn't look like he is stepping up to the podium. President Trump, by the way, says he has, quote, total confidence in sessions and he doesn't think the attorney general would need to recuse himself. But again, we'll be following this at five and, of course, on through nightly news at 630. Karen. All right. Thank you very much, Jason. Also, first of four, if you are waiting for someone to come home tonight, give them a little extra time. We could see some snow squalls that could slow that drive home. Let's check in with Ben Bailey. So how likely is snow, Ben? Well, we've got it on the Fort Line radar right now, Karen. Uh, its bark is worse than its bite, though. You can see that there's a sort of a stream coming in from the northwest down to the southeast, and some of those squalls right now uh, reaching the uh, city of Detroit, but north and south of there, not seeing much activity, not looking for any accumulation out of this, except maybe sitting on the ground in a couple spots. As far as temperatures go, it's kind of hard to get used to these numbers that are below average, but uh, we're going to sink back below the freezing mark and stay there tonight. In fact, the 20s will be hanging around. Could be one of our coldest nights in the seven day forecast. We'll run that down for you and your four zone forecast as well in just a few minutes. Karen. All right, Ben, it has been an inconvenience for two days for residents, schools and businesses here in downtown Detroit. Take a look at this map. Everyone in this area has been forced to boil their water after a drop in pressure created safety concerns. But there is some encouraging news this afternoon. Let's go to Rod Maloney. He joins us live with the latest Rod. Yeah, good afternoon, Karen. You know, the Great Lakes Water Authority is telling us that they have had a successful water test today, meaning that they've gone and they've taken a look at the water that's coming out of the taps in the area of the map, and it's coming out clear and perfectly fine. But there's a problem. There is state regulation. The Michigan Department of Environmental Quality is saying now you got to go 48 hours. So they've tested today. Tests were fine. They have to test again tomorrow and have that test be fine, and then they will lift that water bed. But uh, it has been uh, monumentally inconvenient for businesses, for homeowners, and even for college students. We were over at Wayne State University today talking to some of the students there. Most of the restaurants on campus are closed. A lot of the food service not available to the students. And they were talking about that today, talking about just how inconvenient this, is, inconvenient this has been. 
It's a lot tougher than it, than it sounds. Uh, all the restaurants are closed down. There's coffee machines closed down from not being able to boil. So everybody can get coffee on campus, whether it's from a vending machine or from a store. Um, you can't wash your hands. Really, they told us there's signs on the sinks. You can't drink water, so I'm forced to walk all the way across campus to find a vending machine to get water, and now they're all sold out. Well, another student told me that uh, she was cooking all the food she had left in her apartment at the university. Uh, she cooked pasta because she could boil the water first and ma then make the food. Now, this was the place where it happened. They had a problem with the pumping station here. Uh, and so some of the water uh, wasn't getting pumped into the pipes. They have to have a 20 pounds per square inch uh, level in the pipes in order for, the, for it to be safe. If it dips below that, that's when you get the problem and that's what happened here. They've got it fixed and they're hoping that by this time tomorrow, they can lift the ban. Reporting live in Detroit, Rod Maloney, Local 4. All right, thank you, Rod. A DDOT bus driver is recovering after he was attacked this morning. Witnesses say the driver was sitting in his seat when a passenger started attacking and caused him to drive this bus onto the sidewalk at the Rosa Parks Transit Center. The bus stopped when it hit a guardrail and police arrived. Shortly after, the attacker was immediately arrested. That driver is doing okay this afternoon. The CEO of the Regional Transit Authority faced questions today about his spending habits with his contract renewal just hanging in the balance. Michael Ford met with the RTA board today for about an hour. Questions have been raised about his costly travel expenses, which occurred even as the RTA was asking voters to approve $4.6 billion millage. No decision on Ford's contract is expected until March 8th. Here at home, it is the Get Fit Challenge. Many of you have been following here on Local 4 and on Facebook. Our volunteers are in that final week of trying to change their habits leading up to that final weigh-in. Our Paula Tomlin checks in with one of our Get Fit rock stars. So, Paula, how is she doing? She is doing very, very well. I do want to let you know that I'm at the Macomb Township Rec Center. And it is really a wonderful facility. It's just beautiful, and there are lots of people in here making me look really, really bad right now. But it has also been ground zero. Get Fit for Good Central, particularly for Christina. For Christina, it's been on. For nearly eight weeks, she's been working her rear end off to lose weight and get fit in our local for Get Fit for Good Challenge. You got it. Keep going, girl. You got five more push. With the final weigh-ins around the corner, Monday night, she's tied with three other women to win the challenge. But even if she's not the biggest loser in this challenge, she's the biggest winner. We started changes in our diet that I don't think we'll ever really let go of. We've watched Christina's posts and seen her alternative to punch keys. Normally when I would be driving somewhere and I'd be really hungry. I'd probably just stop for fast food. And lately I've been keeping these little Ziploc bags of almonds and goji berries. What does the what goat does the say? Goat say? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and even with a husband and two babies, as a busy mom, she's found a way to change her life for the better. She now considers herself trilingual. She speaks English, Italian, and health food. I have a whole cabinet full of superfoods from spirulina and algae, camu camu, and maca powder, and matcha. So I just tried to incorporate, you know, different superfoods and figure out how to cook with them and make snacks and meals. Um, we've been putting pumpkin seeds on all of our salad. Um, I've been making homemade chocolate bars with raw organic cacao which is delicious and probably the best chocolate that I've ever had ever. And it's super healthy for you. Our taskmaster, Maria Marino of Maria Marino Fitness Pros. Breathing technique is perfect. Keep going, big exhale, hold those abs in. Her and charm, breathe, wit, and big personality have pushed exhale. participants Lift. to and dig deep and dig Come deeper on, still. This. And break, nice job, awesome. Great, great results. Um, some of the people, I want to say 25 pounds. So we gave them the key tools um, with fitness classes, um, a lot of fitness tips, nutrition tips, and then with that, accountability. Uh, so this is Kristen, and she makes this look so easy. I can do this. No, I can't, not even one of them. Hey, listen, when you want to find out exactly what Macomb County has been doing and how much weight people have really been losing, you've got to join us on Tuesday for our big weigh-in. Karen? All right, thank you very much, Paula. We're going to wrap things up with you because we have breaking oh, news. Let's go back first, to the news conference being held right now by Attorney General I'm Jeff Sessions. The committee that have been 
uh, said to be incorrect and false. Let me be clear. I never had meetings with Russian operatives or Russian intermediaries about the Trump campaign. And the idea that I was part of a, quote, continuing exchange of information during the campaign between Trump surrogates and intermediaries for the Russian government is totally false. Uh, that is the question that Senator Franken asked me uh, at the hearing. And that's what got my attention as he noticed it, noted it was uh, the first, it just breaking news. And it got my attention, and that is the question I responded to. I did not respond by referring to the two meetings, one very brief after a speech, and one with two of my senior staffers, professional staffers, uh, with the Russian ambassador in Washington, where no such things were discussed. In my reply to the question, my reply to the question of Senator Franken was honest and correct as I understood it at the time. I appreciate that some have taken the view that this was a false comment. That is not my intent. That is not correct. I will write the Judiciary Committee soon, today or tomorrow, uh, to explain this testimony for the record. Secondly, at my confirmation hearing, I promised that I would do this. If a specific matter arose where I believed my impartiality might reasonably be questioned, I would consult with the department ethics officials regarding the most appropriate way to proceed, close quote. That's what I told them at the confirmation here. I have been here just three weeks today. A lot has been happening uh, in this three week period. I wish I'd had more of my staff on board, but we're still waiting for confirmation for them. Uh, much has been done, much needs to be done, and, but I did and have done as I promised. I have met with senior officials shortly after arriving here. We evaluated the rules of ethics and recusal. I have considered the issues at stake. In fact, uh, on Monday of this week, uh, we set a meeting with an eye to a final decision on this question. And on Monday, we set that meeting today. So this was a day that we planned to have a final discussion about handle this. I asked for their candid uh, and honest opinion about what I should do about uh, uh, investigations, certain investigations. And my staff recommended recusal. They said that since I had involvement with the campaign, I should not be involved in any campaign investigation. I have studied the rules and considered their comments and evaluation. I believe those recommendations are right and just. Therefore, I have recused myself uh, in the matters uh, that deal with the Trump campaign. The exact language of that recusal is um, in the press release that we, that we will give to you. I've, I've said this, quote, I have now decided to recuse myself from any existing or future investigations of any matter relating in any way to the campaigns for President of the United States. I went on to say this announcement should not be interpreted as confirmation of the existence of any investigation or suggestive of the scope of any such such investigation because we in the Department of Justice uh, resist confirming or denying the very existence of investigation. As you have just so, heard, Attorney General Jeff end, Sessions has officially recused himself from any kind of probe related to the 2016 presidential election. And he also said he did keep his oath when he was answering that question from Senator Al Franken from what he understood in terms of what he thought that question was about. This is continuing on our website at clickondetroit.com and we will have more coverage and reaction of Attorney General Jeff Sessions' press conference later in our newscast this evening. Still ahead, Walt Disney doing something it's never done before with a new twist in the Beauty and the Beast. Plus, consumer investigator Hank Winchester is here. Hi, Hank.
Hi, Karen. We are live in the Help Me Hank phone bank. We have tax experts here answering your questions from AR Law. They are here to answer questions about tax filings, also the latest scams out there. You can call right now the number on your screen, 313-298-WDIV. They're here through 630, and we're back right after the break. Are you organizing? We are heading into the heart of tax season, and that brings up a lot of questions for many of you. Whether you are worried about tax deductions or scammers coming after your money, consumer investigator Hank Winchester is here to help us answer all of our questions. Hi, Hank. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon, and good afternoon to all of you at home. You know, we put together this team from AR Law because we know so many of you have questions, and we also know, unfortunately, there are so many tax scams out there. In fact, coming up today at 5 o'clock, we're going to take a close look at one of the newest scams out there. In fact, a scam that uh, these thieves tried to target one of our local four photographers, but they've been targeting people all over Metro Detroit. The number you can call right now to talk to the team from AR Law, it is 313-298-WDIV. They're going to stay here throughout our newscast until 630, answering your questions. Again, if you've received a suspicious email or a text message, maybe something in the mail that may not be from the IRS, if things don't seem right or you have general tax questions, this is the team that can help you. Again, the number, Karen, 313-298-WDIV. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Hank, and we'll check back with you at 5 o'clock. Lots of people calling that hotline. And Ben is back this afternoon and he's mentioning the word snow and perhaps a slow commute tonight. Ooh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just weird to see the snow. After right, we're not so, used to it. Yeah, so much warm weather, but uh, it is here for a while. We've got a couple chances of getting those flakes. And even though the stuff that's out there right now is not all that intense, we've got a couple of uh, bands of snow that at least could be swirling around here as you drive home tonight. But we're not looking for anything as far as accumulation goes. And we still got some breaks of sun, especially out outside of that stream of snow that's coming right through the heart of the area. 32 right now at Metro. Uh, we've got a wind gust 23 miles an hour. Wind speeds right now at 15. So our wind chills are down into the 20s. Definitely feeling a whole lot different. There's one more band of some organized snow showers that are going to come through here about 5, 6 o'clock tonight. And those will sweep through, be gone by about midnight. Could see a couple more flakes overnight reaching towards daybreak tomorrow, but generally dry conditions on Friday. And we'll start clearing those clouds out in advance of a good amount of sunshine on Saturday. That's really not going to help us out temperature wise. We will see the warmth start to increase as we head towards the end of the weekend. So here are your low temperatures tonight. Your four zone forecast chilly. No doubt about that. All 20s here in our metro zone and low 20s at that. We'll see some teens out there in parts of our south zone, probably a little bit closer to Michigan Avenue, uh, but generally low to mid 20s for most of the zone. 19 there in Flint and Howell. Everybody else right around 20 degrees. Coldest spot will be at our north zone north of M59. Uh, generally teens here with just some 20s down here towards M59. As far as high temperatures go tomorrow, we'll get close to the freezing mark at 31. And that 7-day forecast warms us up as we head into the end of the weekend. We'll get up into the upper 40s there as we close the books on the weekend. But close to 60 for two days here on Monday and Tuesday. A couple chances of rain, but especially here on Tuesday. And then we'll sink down just a little bit, but staying above average for Wednesday and Thursday. So two more really chilly days to get through, Karen. And then we start getting our much more uh, appreciated numbers as we get into next week. All right, thank you. Sunday does look pretty nice. Still had first at four, the new storyline in the Beauty and the Beast that could cause a little bit of controversy coming up. You've probably heard a live action version of Beauty and the Beast is coming to theaters this month. The new movie will also have the first gay character in a Disney film. Director Bill Condon says Gaston's the sidekick Le Few will have a subplot about his sexuality. The character is played by actor Josh Gad. Beauty and the Beast will be in theaters March 17th. And don't forget our Help Me Hank phone bank is open right now. Experts taking your questions about taxes. Just call 313. 298-WDIV, 313-298-WDIV. They will take your calls, answer your questions, and that is open through 6.30. We'll be right back. These days, a lot of... All right, and just a recap, if you had, were with us just a few moments ago, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has recused himself from any sort of interaction in an investigation in the presidential election of 2016 and the Trump campaign in relating to talking to any kind of Russian diplomats. He just spoke at 4.15. We'll be getting reaction from other lawmakers on Capitol Hill and have that for you at 5 and 6. 
All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us for First at Four. We are back in a half hour with Local 4 News at 5. Inside Edition is next.